today I'm sharing some of my favorite bee and sunflower decor DIYs from last summer. I'll try to move as quickly as I can to get through all 17. So if there's some that you want to see the full tutorial on, I'll leave the playlist link in the descriptions below. So let's go. This is a little gnome that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I want to turn it into a beehive gnome. And I'm starting off with black paint from Apple Barrel and I'll be painting his hat and his boots and belt with that. And then using some moon yellow by Folk Art, I'm painting his shirt. I did use two coats to cover completely. And then I used some chocolate brown to color his pants. That's an apple barrel color as well. And I did a little touch up on his beard with some white because the factory manufactured gnomes, they just spray paint wherever on these and I wanted to clean him up. Now I'm gonna be hot gluing some nautical rope around his hat. And I started in the back so the raw edge wouldn't show. I just put a little dot of hot glue every now and then and wrapped and wrapped all the way up to the top of his hat. Once I made it all the way up, I cut the excess and then just twirled that around on itself so he has a nice little pointy hat still. I wanted to make an opening on the front of his hat. So I just took some regular twine, twisted it up in a circle, and hot glued that onto the front right there. I'm going to use a pretty big blob of glue because I thought it would probably be easier to paint on glue rather than the rope. So you'll see it kind of looks a mess right now, but it looks cute when I get it finished. I'm going to take some of that same black paint I used before and a small brush and go all the way around in that circle. The last thing I do for this little guy is add a bee sticker from Hobby Lobby. I also bought buttons there and I will use them later on, but for this guy, he is finished. And just look at that before and after. So cute. I picked up this mason jar sign at Dollar General, but you could also find mason jars at Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is paint up the back. I'm showing you here a tip that I learned that works great every time. A little alcohol on a cotton pad, you can get the adhesive to release from that chipboard or whatever they call this fake wood that they make and because it's alcohol it will evaporate won't saturate so much into the piece now I'm just mixing up some yellow orange and brown paints trying to get the color of honey I do figure out a pre-made color from apple barrel that I'll be sharing later but for now I just mixed and mixed till I got a color that I was happy with. And then I painted the whole front, which used to be the back of this sign. Once that was finished, I added a little white to that previous mixture. And I'm going to take a piece of bubble wrap with the bubbles still intact, unpopped, and I'm going to be using them like a stencil for some honeycomb effect. I just cut a little piece of that, put some of the paint over the, over the bubbles, and then pressed it onto the mason jar. Oopsie. And it looks like that. And I do several patches of that on there. 
On a little wooden tag, I wrote, Be Happy. Put another one of those little bee stickers on there. I'm going to tie it around the top with some twine, but first I'm adding some burlap ribbon. I just frayed one side of it where it was wired, removing the wire, and I'm going to wrap it all the way around what would be the lid of the jar. I attached it with some hot glue, and I just I've got some slits cut there. I'm going to go straight across at the top and fold that ribbon over. And then those sides, I'm going to kind of put them at a diagonal, like so. Then I'll tie on that tag on some twine that says be happy and then the last thing I do which I should have done this earlier but it's just an afterthought I used gloss mod podge to paint over that because the paints that I used were matte and I want it to have more of a shine like Honeywood. This video compilation is part of the Fun Time Friday open playlist. Every month, Tiffany over at Growth Girl Aesthetic invites us to add any type of video we want to this playlist. I hope you'll check those out. I'm painting up some wood blocks. They're about the same size as what they sell at Dollar Tree, but these are actually some scrap wood pieces off some old spindles. And I'm going to paint four blocks white. And I'm going to take some of these little letter, wooden letters from, I believe these came from BB Craft. And I painted them black. I'm going to take some moon yellow and go around the edges, kind of looking like a little bit of distressing on there. And then I'll just glue the black letters on there to spell out buzz. Cute and easy. For this DIY, I'm going to be using a larger than normal egg half plastic egg from Easter. And I'm going to be wrapping it with nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I'll just put a little glue down wrap a little bit, put some more glue down, and so on and so forth till I reach the top. Once I got up to the top, I measured out a little bit extra on that nautical rope to make a loop. And then I put some glue down and stuck the ends right inside so it's nice and clean. To create a faux opening on the front of this little beehive, I'm going to use some of the same rope, just cutting enough for a circle. I glued that on with hot glue. And I put the ends at the bottom because they're going to be covered up. Um, doesn't matter if they're a little shaggy right now. So I took some black acrylic paint from Apple Barrel, small brush, Filled that in, and now it looks like an opening to a beehive. I took one of the cute little bee buttons from Hobby Lobby and stuck over those frayed ends. And you'll never notice it now. Now I'm going to take a daisy. I believe these were some daisies that I picked up at Dollar General. Let's put one little bloom there by the loop at the top. Now I'm going to be making some wood bead garlands. The first one I'm making here is a bee themed and I'm taking seven wood beads and painting them with a bright yellow color of apple barrel paint. And when you swish them like I do here, which is my easiest, favoritest way of painting beads, 
you need to add a little bit of water so the paint doesn't clump up on those beads it just makes a lot smoother finish as you can see here and then you'll just pick them out with a skewer and set them up somewhere to drip dry and I used a couple of those blocks like in one of my previous DIYs make sure you separate them so they don't stick together when they dry I did the same thing with some black beads seven of those for the third color in my bead garland I'm going to be reusing the white ones on this red and white valentine garland then for the yellow I decided to put some little stripes with a fine point sharpie marker just to look kind of like B stripes and I didn't by any means get the stripes straight but it's okay bees are kind of fuzzy so it looked fine now I'm going to put them on a twine from that either come from Dollar Tree or Dollar General and what I like to do is put the end of the twine into the cap of my Mod Podge give it a twist and then a clean cut on the end and that will keep it from fraying my pattern I'm using is one white, one yellow, one white, one black. And I go all the way down with those beads in that pattern. I had two white beads left over and I thought, well, why not? I just stuck them one on each end. So they've got some extra whites there that will be against my tag and tassel. The tassel I'm reusing from another project, it's like um, lace and ribbons of different shades of yellow and white. To get it on the end, I had to urge that piece of twine to go under the original knot that I made for the tassel. And I tied it as tight as possible so it wouldn't slip off and then I stuck that end up through the first bead that's touching snipped off the excess pulled the other beads down to meet that and then I'm going to put a little B button on there I'll just thread them on to a one of these thin ribbons I think it's a satin ribbon and I tied a knot using the ribbon right beside it I could have hot glued it on there but I figured tying it would be easier really it wasn't now for the tag I'm going to be painting both sides with a bright yellow paint one coat on each side And then I wrote on the tag with some little B sayings, be nice or buzz off, and also added some of those Dollar Tree B puppy stickers. I tied that on to the other end, tying a double knot as tightly as I could get it. Put that end up through the first bead like I did on the other side and cut off the excess. And now I have a cute garland that says be kind and be nice or buzz off. Depending on what mood I'm in. Now for a sunflower colored bee garland. I'm going to be doing mo more of a staining effect with these. And I want them to match the sunflower paper I've got there in the top left corner that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I'll be doing seven beads each on these as well. I'm adding a lot of water, almost half and half, to get a stain effect on these beads. I did want the wood grain to show through somewhat. For the green color 
I used holly berry that was too Christmassy green on its own. So I put a touch of black acrylic paint in there. And I was happy with that color. The beads that you see at the bottom left, I used melted chocolate mixed with water for that stain effect. Now being that it's a lot smaller bowl that I'm dyeing them in per se, I had to use my skewer and swish those around instead of just rolling them around in the big bowl. Now I'm going to use the tassel and twine off of the red and white garland that I used the white beads off of before. Ooh, are you keeping up with me there? Anyway, I'm going to do two green, then two brown, two yellow. Then I'm going to go three green, three brown, three yellow. And then I'll go back to the twos. And now this garland's put together like this. Instead of just doing the one, two, three, one, two, three pattern, I want to do something different. I'm also going to be making this a door hanger instead of both ends being loose. I'm going to tie those ends together. I'm mixing up some more of that chocolate brown, or melted chocolate, I should say, with water to stain the wood tag. Then once it was dry, I used some Mod Podge to stick down a little bit of the sunflower paper. And I actually saw this sunflower paper at Hobby Lobby this year as well. So if you love that, they still have it. Stuck my little piece of sunflower there like so and then I went over the top of that with some paper Mod Podge just to seal it all in. I tied the two ends together like so. Fed that excess twine up into the first bead. Cut it down and then using that little piece that I just cut off I'm going to put it through the top in that little hole on the wood tag. I put both ends through together and then I'll tie it around like so. And that will keep it facing forward for the most part because on the back side I kind of messed up, but nobody will ever see it, so it's just fine. Now my sunflower garland is finished and the colors work perfectly for fall as well. For this next DIY, I'm going to take some more of that sunflower paper and make a large book stack. I actually have four different sizes of book stacks here, and I'll show you briefly how I put them together. The top book on the stack, I'm going to have paper covering the front and the spine. The middle book, I'm going to leave green. The book on the bottom, I'm only cutting some of that paper for the spine. That's all that's going to be showing. So, and also, here's a tip for you. If you want to reuse your books over and over, don't want to have to go through the mess of getting paper off that's been Mod Podged on, I just use some hot glue. By doing it this way, I can reuse the books and also that paper. Waste not, want not. After the papers were hot glued on, I stacked the books together and then I took several lengths of twine and wrapped around and I just wrapped all of them at the same time. This was easier for me than going around and around and around four times. So here I'm tying it in a knot and then I'll snip those ends so they're frazzled somewhat. And the last thing I do for this is take one of these sunflowers and glue it on to the top of the book. Putting the glue over the string, that'll help hold that twine in place too. Then I added a couple of little pieces of the leaves 
behind that sunflower. And there's how that looks. Now I'm going to make a medium sized book stack. I'm reusing some paperback books from last year. And there I was just showing you the three colors that I was using. The top two books that are a bit smaller than the bottom one. I'm going to paint those with white Waverly chalk paint. The bottom book I painted the spine with black acrylic paint. The book in the middle I also went back with some yellow and colored in, painted in the spine. Then I'm going to stick them together like so. But first, I'm stamping on the side of those. I don't have an ink stamp, so I just use acrylic paint when the need arises. I'm putting the stamp into the lid of my paint and then dabbing on the letters. And for this book stack, I wrote out, Be Happy. Now I'm going to wrap some ribbons right through the center of those books. I'm going to put black in the middle. Making sure I had enough cut that I could tie a bit of a bow. The other two ribbons there, I'm reusing the houndstooth. I only had enough to go around, not enough to make it into the bow, so I'm going to glue those on separately. Put a little dab of hot glue between the books to hold them together so they don't slide. And now I'm going to tie that black ribbon into a bow. And then I've added the houndstooth ribbon, one on each side. And I also added a little B button to the top of the front side of the book stack. Like that. Yeah, like that. Now for a small book stack, I'm going to use some wood scrap pieces. Ideally, you would want the smooth edge of the sides of the board for your spines. But this is just what I had to work with. And I went with the rough cut edges for the spine. I painted both of them with white chalk paint. I had to really soak those ends to try to get rid of some of the roughness that the sandpaper didn't get rid of. Now I'm going to paint what I'm calling the spine of the bottom book with moon yellow. I believe it's moon yellow paint here. Then with a little bit of paper Mod Podge, I'm going to put some paper on the top. You can see that's a scrap wood because it's so uneven. Yeah, stuck that down like so. And to dress up the edge a little bit, I'm going to use some green satin narrow ribbon there. I also add some sunflower ribbon that I forgot, totally forgot I had. I'm going to tie it up with some of that. Yeah, I'm just sticking that down with Mod Podge. I'm going to use the melted chocolate color for stamping. This time I put out a dot into a bowl and put it on a dauber. Not a great idea. I did have a lot of cleanup to do afterwards because it was pretty smudgy, like you can see here. But on these two small books, I'm writing out, You Are My Sunshine. Then I'm going to take a small paintbrush and go around the letters, just kind of cleaning them up where I had smudges. And it worked okay. I mean, it worked in a pinch, but 
wouldn't highly recommend using acrylic paints like that on these stamps. I glued the two small books together. And like I said before, I'm going to be using some sunflower ribbon. This came from Hobby Lobby. I glued some on the bottom. And I'm going side to side with the ribbon instead of front to back like I've done on books before. I tied a little twine tassel on the top. Didn't get it tied tight enough, so I just put a dot of hot glue there and that held it in place just fine. And there is how that one turned out. Now for a extra small book stack. I'm using a couple of these tumbling tower blocks. They're slightly larger than the Dollar Tree blocks. But, um, you know, what I'm doing is just gluing two with wood glue, gluing them together side to side. And I'm going to do two different miniature books that way. Yep, just glued them together like that and left them alone until they dried. The top book I'm going to paint with uh, moon yellow paint. And then the bottom one, I'm going to use this, um, oh my goodness, I forgot what it was called. I think it's Golden Sunset, but it's just a nice honey color of paint. Yeah, can you read that? I think it says Golden Sunset. As before, I'm stacking the books together with a little bit of hot glue. And then since these are so small, I'm going to use a Sharpie marker with a fine point and write on those, sweet as honey. Now I'm going to take my um, bubble wrap method again, put a little bit of khaki color on it this time, and stamp those books with some um, areas that look like honeycomb. Then I'm going to use a thrifted honey dipper. I'm tying a little bit of twine around the top of that. And I'm going to glue that on the top of the tiny books to cover up that seam between the two blocks. And that's it. Oh, except for a bee. I had another little puppy bee sticker on the handle there and on the book too. I keep forgetting the little details like that. For this DIY I'm using a thrifted ginger jar and I've removed the lid for now. I'm going to be painting the ginger jar with white acrylic paint. I'm actually going to be covering the jar with some nautical rope to be a large beehive but just in case any of the rope had some gaps in it I didn't want the crazy colors showing through. Now I'm going to start what used to be the top of the ginger jar I'm going to turn into the bottom of the ginger jar. That way I've got a nicer shape that looks more like a beehive once I'm finished. So starting at that top that I'm turning into the bottom, I'll just put a little dot of glue, wrap some nautical rope, dot of glue, wrap some rope, dot of glue, wrap some rope, all the way up. Once I got to the top, I'm going to bring that lid of the ginger jar back in, and I'm going to turn that over onto the bottom, glue it down, and this is going to give me a nice honey hive shape. To go on up to that top of that, I'm actually gluing more to the rope rather than the lid to begin with. So I don't have such a big transition of the, the way the rope was going down. I mean, you can see what's going on. And I go all the way up to the top. I believe I used four or five 
nautical ropes on this. But hey, you know, ropes was a dollar each last year, so it may have five or six dollars in it, and it turns out fabulous. A little ring of the same nautical rope on the front, and some black paint inside that gives the opening to the hive. And I'm going to be putting some flowers at the top, just kind of cascading down one side. I'll go with a beautiful big yellow sunflower up beside that handle. And then the flowers going to the side of that, I'm going to use a few daisies. And then I'm also going to use some lavender pieces, just for a little something extra, unexpected maybe. And I think it turned out just lovely. Now I want to have the look of honey streaming out of the hive. So I put some buttons, bee buttons on first, then I was trying to let the hot glue run down the side of the hive. It wasn't working out for me. So what I did was got a little piece of a skewer and let the hot glue run down that. That gives the appearance of the honey dripping out and pooling up on the table. I used Golden Sunset on the honey drips first and then added some little bits of brushed metal in there. And that's how it turned out. And it looks like it's stuck to the table, but surprise, it's not. And there's how my gorgeous, big, beautiful beehive turned out. I'm so glad that I came up with the idea of how to make it look like the honey's pouring out. Now, number 12 DIY is actually a thrift flip. That's a creamer jar that I thrifted and just turned it into a honey pot. And then number 13 is a basket that I spray painted. Easy thrift flips. This is a shorts video that I made and I made my own honey dipper using a handle from a foam brush and the four wheels off a little wooden car. I glued the wheels together and then I attached that foam brush handle on the end of that. And I took some glitter gold glue sticks in my small glue gun and I just streamed some over that to make it look like there's honey attached and it's decorative and functional because it keeps that from rolling around. Here I'm using three of the wood crates from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be staining all three all around the outsides of those using folk art antique wax on a baby wipe. And I just dabbed and blotted and smeared until they were completely covered. I glued all three crates together with some wood glue, like so. Then I added a big, beautiful sunflower. Then I added some wood beads for feet, four on the back and four on the front. Now I've got something to sit on my coffee bar that holds my sweeteners, creamers, and some K-cups. For this DIY, I'm using some Dollar Tree white mugs and some Dollar Tree vinyl, and I'm going to make my own Ray Dunn inspired bee themed mugs. The font that I used is called the Skinny. It was free from Defont, and I've got Busy Bee, Queen Bee. 
bumblebee, and honeybee. I bought this wood round with a chalkboard finish at Walmart. It's 15.75 and it has like the farmhouse slats on the front. It escapes me at the moment what that's called, but um, I didn't like that they were going vertical. I wanted it to be horizontal lines. So what I'm gonna do is just turn it like that. The handle that was on it already, I'm gonna tape that down because I may wanna paint over it and use it vertically at some point, or I may wanna paint on the back something different. But here I'm showing you the three paint colors I'm using and various sizes of paint brushes. But first I'm going to tape off some areas with different colors of painter's tape because I'm going to be painting both yellow and white stripes and that was just something to keep me aware of what was going on and what I was supposed to be doing. Now I can see how my stripes are going to go. I'm going to use some black acrylic paint and go over that center section because it's looking kind of scuffed up and I want it to look new. For the white paint, I'm going to use that in all the areas that I have the blue paint taped over. I'll be putting yellow paint where the light green stripes of paint are. I was having a hard time getting my yellow paint to cover up the black underneath. So I just added some baking soda to that to make it super thick and then applied it and that worked just fine. When I had all my stripes on the way I wanted them, I got the tiniest paintbrush that I have and dabbed a little bit of black paint in between the yellow and white just to give it more separation and I didn't try to get the lines perfectly straight. I don't think anyone would really notice unless they were standing right in front of it. Now I'm going to put a decal on there that says be our guest and this is one that I just made with my Cricut. I used painters tape as my transfer tape because I was out of the clear transfer tape per se and it works great in a pinch. Now I'm going to take a variety of ribbons and make me a nice big bow to go on the top. The ones there, those four are all from Hobby Lobby and then I also threw in some Dollar Tree ribbons in a smaller, more narrow that would go along with that. I'm just getting the colors that I want all different styles of ribbon, wired or not, and um, yeah, I think they all blended well together. I'm doing some simple bows with the ribbon, just kind of crossing it over like so, pinching it in the center, and then I'm going to use some narrow ribbon to tie around the center there. And I'm going to do this with all those different types of ribbon, just simple bows stacked together. The one after being smaller than the one before. And I'm going to be using the widest ribbon on the bottom going to the most narrow ribbon on the top. And it's looking like that. I really love mixing different types of ribbon together. I think it's so pretty. It's all in the color scheme that I wanted. The only thing bee themed about this is the one ribbon that actually has bees on it. But yeah, looks nice together. I'm going to take some sisal rope and make me a hanger. 
and I'm going to be touching that with hot glue. And I believe I used the Gorilla, yeah, I know I did. I used the Gorilla glue, hot glue on this. And I just went down the side. And then I did the same on the other side. And now I'm going to attach that bow right at the top of that wood round. Put a little glue on there, pressed it down, and then I flipped it over and put some more glue on the back just to give it some extra security there. I added a couple of sunflower blooms on one side of the bow and a little bee from Hobby Lobby on the other side. And there's how it looks. So stinking cute. Here's a bonus DIY. I'm going to show you how I make simple ribbon swags for my large lanterns. I get different types of ribbon that I think blends well, like I used on the B sign before. And what I'm doing here is just making one loop with the pieces of ribbon that I've got cut which means that every loop has two tails. This is so stinking simple and it looks so pretty. There you go. Here's a peek at how my coffee bar looked last year. I've got thrifted items, dollar store items, DIYs. I've got just a little bit of everything on there. The little wired beehive is from Hobby Lobby. And then everything else, I either made it or thrifted it or dollar stored it. I don't think I ever did a reveal of my coffee bar last year. I'm not sure. Anyway, this is how it looked. This year I'm working on ice cream shop themed decor for my coffee bar. So if you're interested in seeing the things that I'm making for that, be sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything new. I already have several of those videos uploaded into its own playlist. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was longer than normal for me, and I'm glad you hung in there with me. Now go check out the Fun Time Friday playlist, as well as Tiffany's channel if you're not familiar with her. And until next time, bye-bye!